As I'm making my way through this list, I'm realizing it's all starting to sound a bit ambitious. <laughs> Hi darling reader friends, it's Alora. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm really excited because I'm filming my February TBR. I love the month of February because it really represents being grateful for the people that you care about and I just think that's so sweet. And there's also a lot of chocolate. <laughs> so some of the books on my February TBR are romance themed, but not very many of them. Mostly I'm just trying to fulfill my 2020 reading goals. So as we go along, I'm going to be sharing with you what boxes each book ticks off in terms of my goals. For example, the first book that I want to talk about is City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. This is an Egyptian slash Middle Eastern inspired fantasy story, and I'm listening to it on audiobook. So what this book ticks off for me is the buzzword of on, which this month is a color. Brass is kind of a color. Sometimes I'm counting it. <laughs> and it also takes off a book that I purchased in 2019 or before. And it also is part of a series. So even though it doesn't complete a series, it's still working me towards that goal. Another fantasy book that I want to finish is Of Ice and Shadows by Audrey Coulthurst. Now this is the second in a duology, so this one will check off completing a series. This story has a female-female romance in it, and it has some elemental magic, some politics. At least in the first one, I was mostly here for the romance, but we'll kind of see how it progresses now that we're in book two. Oh, it also checks off a book that I bought in 2020. The book that I'm probably going to finish first this month is actually Motherhood by Sheila Hetty. This is an autobiographical memoir style story that is very introspective and is examining this, this topic of motherhood and whether women should quote unquote be mothers and what they're missing if they aren't mothers and the whole dynamic between women who aren't mothers and women who are, or vice versa, between women who aren't mothers and men, between women and society and culture, and it's a very interesting examination. This one doesn't really tick off any of the boxes, I was just very interested in it, so we'll see how that one goes. I've already finished most of it, so I think I know where I stand on it, but I'll let you know in my wrap-up. So let's talk about the books that I'm reading this month that are translated. The first one is Agua Viva by Clarice Lispector. This is a book that's translated from Portuguese, I believe the author is Brazilian, and it's a modern classic that is exploring the theme of the instant, or kind of the present moment, and it's about life, it doesn't really have a... It doesn't really have a backbone in terms of storyline, it's more just her thoughts on this topic and so far I'm really enjoying her writing style. According to who who wrote the um according to Benjamin Moser who wrote the introduction, Clarice Lispector was really known for her kind of odd use of syntax and grammar even in her native Portuguese. So I'm enjoying this one so far, but I haven't made it very far in because I'm highlighting it and it's kind of the type of book that I want to take slowly. Another translated book that isn't here with me yet that I want to read this month is The Ice Palace by Tarjev Vesas, Vis I believe. Now this is a Norwegian classic that was originally written in Norsk and has been translated into English. It follows the story of these two young girls who are friends and they go to this frozen waterfall that they call the Ice Palace or the Ice Castle. And yeah, it's. I think it's a bit of a mystery and I think that there's some darker, deeper themes, but I don't know too much else about it, which is fine by me. I'm very interested to give it a go. Plus the cover is absolutely gorgeous. So both of those check off the translated works box. The next two books I have are actually romances. So the first one is called A Taste for Love. This is a YA contemporary romance that follows a girl whose mom, I believe, owns a boba shop and her mother has decided to host a competition so that she can sneakily set her daughter up with some dates. So in the synopsis, it says that all of the men that her mom has picked, handpicked to be in the competition, are like eligible Asian American boys or young men. Yeah, it sounds fun. I love boba and it sounds cute. This isn't the type of book that I normally read, but maybe it is because I read a lot of things. <laughs> I don't really necessarily have a type of book that I normally read. I'm pretty eclectic in terms of genre, but I'm hoping that it's really fun and sweet and cute and I love 
bakery settings or like you know sweet shop settings and so I think this will be really fun and then the other romance that I have is actually because of Ashley from a frolic through fiction she keeps recommending Fortuna Sworn and it just sounds really good this one is a dark fairy romance and it follows this woman young woman Fortuna who has some sort of magical power surrounding dreams or nightmares which sounds really interesting and reminds me a little bit of Lainey Taylor's Muse of Nightmare Strange the Dreamer series but we'll see how this one goes I'm really excited it sounds like it's going to be a little bit steamy it sounds like it's going to be really just steeped in folklore and fairy ta those fairy tale vibes which I love so I'm so excited about that one. It's actually waiting at my P.O. box right this very second as we speak but I haven't been in town for a few days so I'll go pick that up soon and I'm planning on reading that for Faro Feb which is fantasy romance February which I'll do a whole vlog around a little bit later in February. Another book that I'm going to be reading for Faro Feb is A Court of Silver Flames by none other than Sarah J Mass. <laughs> So this series I've really enjoyed. It's one of those like guilty pleasures, but I also don't know if I believe in guilty pleasures because if it's not hurting anybody and it's a pleasure to you, then why not just enjoy it? Anyway, this is the sort of sequel to the Court of Thorns and Roses trilogy and it follows Feyre. No, <laughs> it doesn't follow Feyre. It follows Nesta, Feyre's sister, um, and I'm not really sure if I will have remembered enough about the trilogy to really get all of the details. I almost feel like I should reread the whole trilogy, but I know that's not going to happen because I have so many new books that I want to read. But I'm really excited about this one. I've listened to all of the previous Sarah J Mass, well at least in this series, on audiobook, and so I'm going to continue that way. And that comes out on the 16th of February, so it will be perfect time for my little staycation. I've rented an Airbnb in the nearest city and I'm just going to go and hang out by myself and read and catch up on YouTube. So there are a few other books that I might sprinkle in here or there like these. Another book that I plan to listen to on audio this month is The Midnight Library. This book won the Goodreads Award for Best just general fiction, wasn't it? And so I'm very curious. It's about a woman who, there is a trigger warning for suicide here, she takes her own life and she enters this kind of liminal place in between life and death where she can see the way that her life could have gone had she made any number of other decisions throughout the course of her life and all of these stories are written in books that she can read and experience. It's obviously a very popular book and I'm curious to see what I think about it. I have some other books that don't really fit prompts but that I just want to read and so one is Solutions and Other Problems by Ali Brosh. This is a humorous comic and her illustrations are so funny. I think that her the, the gem of her work is the expressions that she puts on the characters' faces. They're so hilarious. And sometimes the way she words things too is just so unexpectedly delightful. I found myself laughing out loud a bunch in the first half of this book and I'm hoping to continue to find it really funny. I thought Hyperbole and a Half was very funny when I first read that a few years back. And yeah, I think we all just need a little joy in our lives right now, you know? <laughs> As I'm making my way through this list, I'm realizing it's all starting to sound a bit ambitious. <laughs> especially because February is the shortest month and the next two weeks are my finals. <laughs> I also have this book that I started. I don't plan to finish it in February, but I do want to continue making my way through, and that's The Turnip Princess and Other Newly Discovered Fairy Tales. I guess the story behind this was that there was this box of manuscripts discovered in some attic that contained a bunch of tiny little fairy tales that had been written around the time of the Grimm Brothers fairy tales and Hans Christian Andersen and so I'm very excited to kind of get through these. They're all two to three pages long which is a little bit short for my taste but I'm hoping to find some really magical stories in here but for the most part these are the ones that I'm most excited about. Alright guys until next time I am sending you love appropriate for February.